Ever wonder about why some reactions happen faster than others? So I'm sure you've wondered why some chemical change go really fast and some go very slowly. Explosions are quick. They convert from solids into gases faster than the speed of sound. On the slow side, this piece of iron lying on the ground might take months to turn into rust. Both of these reactions falls into the category of redox reactions. So what's going on? Well, to give you an example, take this log, some air and some matches. If you try to burn the log all at once, it would take a really long time. To make it go faster, you could try a couple of things. If you were to chop the same log up into little pieces, the fire burns much quicker. Why? The ingredients are the same. What's the difference? So, it turns out there are a few things you can do to speed things up when you'd like a reaction like this to go faster. The basic idea is that you get the particles from the air, called oxygen, to find the parts of the wood that burn. If you get them to touch each other faster, the fire would burn faster. Air is 21% oxygen. If you used pure oxygen, the fire might even explode. But not all reactions are between solids and gases. So when a car burns petrol as fuel, some things need further attention. The petrol goes into the car as liquid. The one big problem is that liquids burn only at the surface. That's a bit too slow to drive a car forward. So, when a car uses the petrol, it sprays the petrol into the engine in tiny droplets. That means that the oxygen from the air and the fuel can meet each other and burn quicker. Modern engines even squeeze the mixture of fuel and air into a smaller space to make sure that the chances of their meeting is much better. So the fuel explodes under the heat and pressure inside and this pushes the car forward, letting us get to where we are going. All good? Not quite. There are millions of cars on the road, and each one burns fuel and makes exhaust gases. Especially in large cities, the amount of pollution that all cars produce together can create big problems. In order to reduce emissions, modern car engines carefully control the amount of fuel they burn. They try to keep the amount of air and fuel in strict recipe. Theoretically, at this ratio, all of the fuel will be burned using the oxygen in the air. The problem is that there is still nitrogen in the air, and that can be combined with the oxygen at high temperatures in the engine. This makes really nasty gases like nitrogen oxide and nitrogen dioxide. These are both very toxic and corrosive. They turn into acid rain in the atmosphere and are really bad in general. So, some of the oxygen is used up by the nitrogen in the air. This means that some of the carbon in the fuel isn't burnt properly and turns into carbon monoxide. This is also not good, because it's a toxic gas and can cause health problems like tiredness, coma, and even kill people if it is concentrated enough. To solve those problems, governments created clean air laws that decide the amount of pollution that cars can produce. Over the years, automakers have made cars better to keep up with those laws. A really clever device called a catalytic converter was invented to help control the toxic gases made. It lets nitrogen oxide and carbon monoxide turn into less harmful gases before leaving the car. In chemistry, a catalyst is a substance that causes or accelerates a chemical reaction without itself being affected. It's a helper chemical, but it restores to the same state at the end. 
so it can be used again and again. That's a really good thing because the metals used in these catalytic converters is really expensive. You might recognize them as platinum, palladium, rhodium and gold. They cost thousands of dollars for even a single tablespoon of the metal. A mixture of platinum and rhodium allow nitrogen oxide to turn back into nitrogen and oxygen. In a second reaction, platinum and palladium help carbon monoxide combine with oxygen and make carbon dioxide, which is a lot less harmful. So, this all happens very fast. The car is traveling along very rapidly and making gases all the time. The catalytic converter needs to speed up the reaction massively. One way that manufacturers do this is to spread the metals over a large structure so that the gases touch a very large area at the same time. You might have guessed that the converters work better when they are warm. So a disadvantage is that it takes time to heat the converter up to a working temperature. So cars that burn fuels make a lot of harmful gases and even if they only give out carbon dioxide, that contributes to global climate change. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, which isn't great. Electric cars hope to solve that problem by storing energy in batteries. The recent popularity of electric cars is even affecting the price of platinum and other metals used in petrol and diesel-driven cars. So, why are we still learning about catalysts if cars of the future won't depend on them? Well, do you like food? I think most people do, and the majority of food is grown using fertilizers made in a process that needs catalysts. The same is true for all plastics, medicines and textiles. You might be surprised to know that catalysts are actually everywhere and are especially important in your body. Very clever catalysts in the body are called enzymes. These are large molecules made of protein that help some reactions in the body happen much faster. They help us break down food and make a variety of important chemicals in our cells. Your body controls the speed of all the reactions in your body exactly by keeping a steady temperature and making sure that we can eat, breathe and drink to keep the concentration of all these substances at the right level. The speed of these reactions in the body as a whole is called the rate of metabolism. You might have heard of it before. Understanding catalysts and all of the factors that control the rate of speed of a reaction is very important. Come with us as we figure it out.